Hey, my name is Tom and welcome to today's Web3 tutorial. So today we're going to be going over Phantom Network and how to deploy on their testnet and shortly after their mainnet. So you might have been hearing about Phantom Network and their EVM compatible blockchain which has faster speed than current Ethereum platform but also has different trade-offs. So recently they've got their own DEXs and their lending platforms and a lot more people are starting to use it. So today we're going to go through deploying a simple smart contract on Phantom which uses Solidity, same as Ethereum, and then we're just going to be going through how to do that on Testnet and Mainnet. So let's get started. Cool. All right. So I'm going to have all of these links below, but I've recently gone to Phantom Foundation. So it's the main documentation for developers to develop on Phantom. It's EVM compatible, compatible it's fast and scalable, etc etc so oops i'll just move here um so we are going to first of all set up metamask so metamask is quite required within um the uh, smart contract um just interactions with web3 particularly even with smart contract development so here you see all of these rpcs i probably have a bit more than you guys do but we have different networks of things so what we want to do here is I usually split my screen so it's a bit easier. Um, we want to set up two things. We have both the test net and then the main net, right? So within the test net, it's basically free um, and it won't cost you any real money. But then the main net is what will, you know, cost you real money. So if we look at there are too many. I have too many crypto wallets. All right, so within Ethereum development, so what you're gonna go do is you're gonna add go to your custom RPC. And let me just put that there. And what you wanna do, so let's add in the testnet version first. Um, because I have a hack on how to do the, the main net one much easier. So we're going to custom RPC down below here. Um, and then we're going to add Phantom Testnet. URPC URL HTTPS PC.testnet.phantom.net work. Chain ID 0x. FTM Block Explorer Optional Cool Alright, so let me save that um, I already have that set up here with an emoji Oh no, I haven't added it before Okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to go to this faucet. So a faucet is like a, uh, a tank, like a water faucet that gives you free water. But this, in this case, it gives you free development test faucet. So my address is 0x32. I'm going to put it here and request. Cool. So the transaction should go here. And I'm going to edit my MetaMask to include the testnet. Sorry, I should have done this before. The testnet will be here. Cool, so it's been a success and I should have received 10 FTM. So cool, great. Um, so here is the hack to usually add other versions of networks. I usually just press it. this. Oops. Let me just check my MetaMask. And then it says, allow this site to switch the network. And usually if you haven't done this, it actually displays the RPC um, to add the, the custom custom endpoint to add so just quick switch network and now this developer account is switching to the mainnet and I don't have any real 
FTM here. Um, um, cool. So let's switch back to the Phantom testnet. Cool. Back to mini testnets. All right. So here, that was all done. I'll link everything below. Um, so we've done setting up MetaMask. And now we want to deploy a smart contract. So it uses EVM on the back end, so it functions the same way as Ethereum does. It requires bytecode, which has compiled code, FTM for gas, we all know that Ethereum uses gas, and it needs to deploy and then either access an endpoint to, to um, be able to uh, operate. So essentially you'll be compiling and then deploying a smart contract. These actually link to Ethereum because it's pretty much the same thing. So what we're going to do is clicking on create, oops, creating a variable cap asset. So we are going to write a very simple ERC20 contract, um, which will just say um, like Shiba, and then symbol is Shiba, uh, decimals is 18, total supply is 1 million or 10 trillion, who knows. And then all of this is kind of all within the contract. So it's just to kind of help you set up the the, the endpoints of both the testnet and the mainnet, and then use um, an IDE like Remix to deploy it. So there are always, so you would visit this uh, website called remix.ethereum.org. And what we're going to do is we are going to write a phantom test contract. Sold. So usually the first thing we do is we'll end up writing our licensing and then our Pragma compiler. So let me just go here and then open Zeppelin. And So Open Zeppelin's a really awesome company that writes all these like templates and just open sources a lot of cool things. Um, so they've already given us all of the functions and it's a few hundred lines of code. So I'm just going to copy this. We're not going to reinvent the wheel today. Um, and then should copy soon. <laughs> um, and then I'll oops. Copy, should be my clipboard, strange. All right, I'm just gonna be very boring and do it this way. Cool. All right, so let's go over all of this. So SPDX license identifier, it's always just the type of uh, identifier we use. We'll also acknowledge that's the Open Zeppelin V4 contracts and Pragma is the version of the compiler. So first of all, let's just lower our compiler to 0 0.8. Um, and then these imports most likely will not work because we don't have the like directory access to this. So what we're actually gonna have to do is like import it like this. So I have this from another one, but I can show you later. So within here, it's got a whole lot of contracts. Um, Open Zeppelin, so they have contracts for governance, security, utils, um, ERC20, so ERC20 is probably in the token folder. Um, Etc. So what we're going to do is we are going to import the direct URL for it that points to both IERC20, IERC20 metadata, and context. So this just follow along um, in terms of the syntax. So I'm just going to remove this. Cool. And they just make the documentation really cool here and just write in a lot of detail. But I'm just going to minimize a lot of these things um just so we know actually we don't have to do all of that 
what we just want to do is change a few variables. So we have the total supply, the name, and the symbol. So first of all, let's call our contract the Phantom Test Contract. Um, and what we're going to do is with index constructor, we are going to say the name is Phantom Test Coin. The symbol will be FTC. And the total supply will be say a million one times ten by six yeah Wait. let me this is correct I think it's the syntax oops yeah great um so what we're going to do, not found utils context. This across. And compiled contracts. Um, what do I need to do? Okay, expected but didn't get something. Uh -huh. Cool. All right, so let's just compile it. Um, seems to get a green tick for a go. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to test on our normal JavaScript. It's a very local um, virtual machine here. Um, don't worry too much about it, I'll just press deploy, see how that works. And on the left hand side, we can interact with the transaction. So let's just say the name it should be Phantom Test Coin, the symbol is FTC, and total supply should be a million, so 10 and 6 zeros. Decimals 18. So this is pretty much a very basic ERC20 contract. You deployed it to this fake network here. So what we actually want to do is we want to use this in injected web three provider. So uh, we want to connect to dev here. Cool. It says I have ten ether, even though it's FTM. It's like whenever you use an EVM compatible um, blockchain outside that isn't Ethereum, it would denominate ETH as this as this currency. So like. FTM or BNB or IVA for Avalanche. So what we're going to do is pretty much uh, deploy it. Let's see what happens. Do I press deploy? Okay, it says it's creating a contract. So I don't know what is happening. Thing is because my internet's really slow today. So MetaMask here should pop up, so it's popped up twice. I'm just gonna reject the first one. Okay, so here for contract deployment it costs 0 0.00178. Mm. Confirm. Great. And what I'm gonna do is cool, it's actually being deployed. So let's click here. Um, and voila, the contract has been created. So let's just take, check a few things here. So I press from 0x32f, and then within this one, it should show my address. And so I received 10 FTM from the faucet, and I created a contract. And now I created a contract here. So here, you can verify the contract and stuff, um, etc. And the only main difference is if you want to deploy to mainnet is pretty much just change this Phantom to Phantom Opera. I don't have any FTM there most likely, so I won't really be able to do it because you need this thing called gas to be able to do it. But essentially you can just deploy this to mainnet for this just by that.
So hopefully this has helped you understand how to deploy to an EVM compatible blockchain, i.e. say Phantom or uh, BSC or Avalanche. So um, hope you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe and leave any comments below if you get any, if you get stuck. Thanks.